I also want to learn about what the rich gay uncle hypothesis is for homosexuality. Well, I, I don't know if that's the I don't know if that's the formal name, but it's the name that an evolutionary biologist at uh, at Boston University, uh, who will remain unnamed, inform it's what he un- informally called it uh, in one of our lectures, and it was pretty interesting. So the idea here is that we have this powerful cultural stereotype in the West of the rich gay uncle, right? It's like the it is known that um, that gay men tend to have slightly higher incomes, and the idea is that oh, that you know, there's some in- social investment that tends to happen um, diagonally from them to the offspring of their closest kin, their siblings. They're also more likely to have older brothers, so they're more likely to be an uncle. They're more like they're probably it's a birth more, order yeah. effect. Yeah, exactly. They're they're more likely to have the. Uh, that's exactly right. They're more likely to have the opportunity. Think about that. Did you be? I did look sh- at me. I know you're killing throwing me. fucking shit into that's Newtonic for you. I know exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's hitting me as well. I, yeah. I feel smarter than ever. Uh, so they tend to be quite successful and avuncular, and it, uh, that that's interesting, right? Now they've tested this in the West, and it has not borne the type of fruit that you might expect it to. There doesn't seem the the idea of it as a hypothesis is basically this. I should have explained this at the outset. Is that it's hard to explain. We know that there is some heritable component to homosexuality, but it is quite difficult to explain how, how that gets heritable. On. Yeah, how does that persist? Right. That, Given that, that you can't reproduce if you're truly being gay. Yeah, you're. Yeah, you're truly. At, it, like uh, I know that a high percentage of homosexual people have some opposite sex encounters at some point yeah, in unless life. You're, unless you've thumbed but, it in enough times to be able to actually have a kid. Yeah, like this is this is just not how... Yeah, so 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 it's like, it's, it's, it's at the very least, even if in a state of nature, a lot of homosexual people would reproduce anyway, um, it's at the very least reducing their odds not to feel mm-hmm. opposite sex attraction. On the back foot. Yeah, right? So how does that persist? And so the idea was, is that maybe it would persist through kin selection. So one way to win the game of survive and reproduce is to get your genes into the next generation by re- reproducing yourself. But the other way is to piggyback off the reproduction of your kin. Such, I mean, they share a sibling shares fifty percent of your genes, uh, so it's entirely possible that you can have this, you know, um, offspring adjacent to you mm. that shares twenty five percent of your genes. And you can essentially pass on your genes by supporting them surviving and reproducing. Mm. And so the idea w- was uh, with with this hypothesis, this rich gay uncle hypothesis, that maybe the way homosexuality persi- uh, persists is by instead of having one kid, right, you support two kids right. of mm-hmm. your your closest kin. Could that be passed on genetically? Is there a lineage yeah. for this to be able to work? Yes, yeah, so that could work. That could work. Uh, mechan- if you're asking, like, is this th- is this theoretically possible? Yes. yes. Yeah, in terms of the mechanic. I don't understand yeah. how the lineage of the person who did the thing but wasn't a part of the promulgation. The gene, yeah, so, so it would be the case if the genes for homosexuality, and this is how most behavior genetics works, as you know, if it wasn't like, um, if it's more like genes that increase your probability of expressing homosexuality rather than like an individual gene that causes it, mm-hmm. then if you have some of those genes... Enough so. If you have enough of those genes that you exhibit the behavior, um, then your your kin still have the, some of those genes as well, and you're passing on your genes indirectly yes, through yeah. them through their kids. Yeah, exactly. Right. So okay. that, that's the, that's the hypothesis. It is not well supported in the West. Um, it, it 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 hasn't borne out. It is well supported um, among the Fafafine of independent Samoa. So this is a group where it's um. It's a, it's, I don't want to analyze because the culture is so different. I don't want to analogize it to American and Western homosexuals, Mm. which are, have their own kind of cultural phenomenon that we can, we can talk about. Mm -hmm. This is different. It's considered a third gender in this space and they are natal males, right? So they're, they're biologically male and they are attracted to males and they are not transgender. That's not what's going on. Mm. Um, they present in a very feminine way and they occupy their own space. And it's a similar percentage to what we see with Western homosexuals, right? right. So some might say that it is a, um, it is a cultural 
reinforcement of Bucket. homosexuality, essentially. Yep. Yeah. Like a cultural space to that homosexual people can fill. And in those groups, it does seem that they are statistically uh, more avuncular, right? They invest more. They act more as uncles mm. um, than straight uncles do. It, and so it seems to be that there's some support for this idea that they lose. We talked about losing paternity and rega regaining it else elsewhere. Mm. They lose paternity, but they regain uh, kin selection benefits by supporting their sisters and brothers in their reproduction. It feels to me like the male provisioning equivalent of alloparenting. Yeah. It feels a little yeah. bit like the grandmother hypothesis, but ap actually yes. outside. Yes, it's a very analogous to that. That's a great analogy. Yeah. It's a lot like the grandmother hypothesis, where it's it's l it, at a certain point, if you have 20 brothers, maybe it's better to not to stay off but the if you've pitch. got If you've got fucking 20 brothers, you are gay. <laughs> yeah. If you've got 20, if your brother 21 with 20 brothers. <laughs> your, odds, your odds are so low because it, yeah. is, it is a loading effect where if you have one older brother... There's a slight increase if you two, two older brothers. Three, there's a slightly four, bigger. Yeah. And then if you're the My fucking brother, brother 20. Yeah. It's like, dude, there's no chance. You come back around and become straight, actually. Yeah. yeah it's a horseshoe um, theory. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, uh. But you get what I'm saying is that it's like, imagine your brother, imagine your brother seven. Is it optimal for you to get on the same pitch as them and compete for the same women? Mm. Or is it better to step off the pitch and say, hey, you guys go is get Is that them, the explanation for the birth order effect? Um, it's basically it's connected. Yeah. It's basically a. I'm going to, the weather vane, lick my finger and put it in the air to be like, how, how's the sex ratio yep. going to be in this local ecology? So that's what some people, so I, I'm definitely not the first person to have said this, whether it's true or not, uh, it's kind of touchy because it does seem to be downstream. The birth order effect mechanistically seems to be downstream of an immune response. Immune system because it yeah, works, it works for um, abortions and it works for miscarriages yeah, so too. Now, yeah, exactly. So those things can be adaptive to be clear. Like you can have a mechanism like that and have it be adaptive. It'd be weird bit, that it would go through the immune system. Yeah, it's a bit quirky. Yeah. Um, but it could go It could go like that. What are it, other explanations for birth order effect? Um, Why would well, the woman's immune system react in this way to having a male inside of it? Yeah, well, it could be a... To be honest, it could be more of an adaptation on the part of the mother rather than the rather than the gay son. Mm -hmm. Like maybe it's not the it's not that the gay son gets a selective benefit from investing. It's that the mother's total reproductive pool is increased by not adding another competitor and instead adding another um, instead Contributor. of adding a, yeah a helper. Again, this isn't a theory. That oh, so the mother could the, the immune system thing could be the mother's way of ensuring the rich gay uncle. Yeah. Yeah, wow. exactly. So it's not so in terms of where the adaptation is actually happening, that's why it would be quirky. Like the reason that I had that gut reaction mm. is that it would be strange for the this gay the son's adaptation to mechanistically occur as an immune system response in the mother. Mm -hmm. It would probably be more likely to be adaptive for the mother in terms of like the the locus. However, I actually don't think we're talking about it and it's very interesting. If you had to say, you know, Mac and put your chips down, is this true or not? I'd say that the rich gay uncle hypothesis is probably not true. I would say that the the Fafafina are a unique cultural case where they have a they have a cultural scaffolding that makes it adaptive mm. in their case. But if you looked at homosexuality writ large, uh, I don't think that that's the explanation for its persistence. No, I, and I don't know what is. My honest answer is like because people I, I do I do AMAs occasionally. Every time, every single AMA, people are asking explain homosexuality, and I understand it. It's like the first thing you'd want to ask. Mm -hmm an evolutionary sexual scientist, right? Mm. And the, my honest answer is I'm not sure what's going on. But this is a pretty cool explanation. In other news, you've probably heard me talk about Element before, and that's because I am, frankly, <laughs> dependent on it. Uh, and it's how I've started my day every single morning. This is the best tasting hydration drink on the market. You might think, why do I need to be more hydrated? Because proper hydration is not just about drinking enough water. It's having sufficient electrolytes to allow your body to use those fluids. Each grab and go stick pack is a science backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium. It's got no sugar, coloring, artificial ingredients, or any other junk. This plays a critical role in reducing muscle cramps and fatigue while optimizing brain health, regulating your appetite, and curbing cravings. This orange flavor in a cold glass of water is a sweet, salty orangey nectar and you will genuinely feel a difference when you take it versus when you don't which is why i keep going on about it best of all there's a no questions asked refund policy with an unlimited duration buy it use it all and if you don't like it for any reason they give you your money back and you don't even have to return the box that's how confident they are that you'll love it 
Plus, they offer free shipping in the US. Right now, you can get a free sample pack of Element's most popular flavors with your first purchase by going to the link in the description below or heading to drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom. That's drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom. Congratulations for making it to the end of a clip. Your brain has not been fried by TikTok. Uh, watch the full episode here.